Can you talk a little bit about the mindset, um, since we are in this, you know, Democrat v. Republican era, has there been much on the policy front with regard to this group, um, a difference in approach, certainly a difference in rhetoric, but an actual on-the-ground approach with H-1B under Biden versus Trump? Well, in the executive branch, there definitely has been. Um, I think there's been a number of initiatives from the Biden administration that have tried to make it uh, somewhat easier for, for highly skilled. Mm-hmm. They, they had some initiatives on, on entrepreneurs. The denial rates were very high during the Trump administration. And as we talked about last time, there were there was a successful lawsuit before the Trump administration end, ended that brought the denial rates for H-1B visas down uh, quite a bit. I think you've also seen some effort in Congress, last Congress, uh, and in previous Congress to try to eliminate the per country limit. Uh, mm-hmm. Those have not; those efforts have not been successful. Uh, that would have helped at least lower the the wait employment based wait time for some people, um, particularly from India. Uh, but you also saw last Congress the House passed a measure that would have exempted people with master's degrees in key technical fields and 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 well as well as PhDs. And that was blocked by Senator Grassley, a Republican from Iowa. Uh, and uh, there weren't enough other Republicans who intervened to try to uh, stop him from blocking it on, on the CHIPS Act, uh, the semiconductor mm-hmm. bill. And if that had become law, that would have been uh, a very important uh, competitiveness reform for the United States for attracting highly skilled people and most importantly, retaining highly skilled people. Is there any estimate as to what we lose with this ongoing debate and restrictions? And I know it's hard to put an actual price on it, but since we're talking about competitive advantages, how do you measure that in some way beyond the numbers of of visa holders themselves? Well, we estimated, for example, uh, I'm doing some. We've done some research on the Chinese visa bans that the Trump administration put into effect that affect people from China with PhDs and 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 in some cases mm-hmm. masters in computer science if they went to certain universities, and we estimated for every thousand uh, of those people, of those individuals who are blocked. Uh, you're looking at billions and billions and billions of dollars in, in lost uh, economic output for the United States because of the innovations uh, that those people would have mm-hmm. created. And so if you translate that into other other people who are going to Canada, to China, and other places, um, and we see that that's what, exactly what happens. You're looking at you know tens of billions more, hundreds of billions likely uh, when you when you add it all up, depending on the time frame. I have a, a an article uh, coming out shortly on the updated research by Britta Glennon that looks at uh, what happens when companies are denied H-1B visas or or uh, restrictions are, are put on them, and and what she found is uh, is the companies uh, send the people to to Canada, uh, and they send them to China, and they send them to India, yep. and and they and they expand resources there. So these types of restrictions um, don't end up quote protecting American jobs. What they do is send more jobs and resources outside of the United States. 